Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're looking for five survival items for five dollars. So stick around. Let's talk about cheap gear and cheap equipment. For a piece of gear or equipment to be considered cheap, it's usually purchased below market value it's made from inferior materials, it's extremely low quality, and you go into it knowing there's a chance in the immediate future it's going to become broken or unserviceable. So what I want to do today is go to a dollar store and I want to grab five cheap items. These five cheap survival items should be the core of every single kit, and they are a cutting tool, combustion device, cover, cordage, and a container. major score right here. We got five survival items for five dollars plus tax. Let's go ahead and do a review and talk about them. Now there were several cutting tools to pick from, from steak knives, butcher knives. None of them were full tang, um, but went ahead and chose to go with this utility camp knife. It's stainless steel. Oh, it can be opened either left hand or right hand. It's a basic folding knife. Extremely cheap. Just the plastic, it's got small little rivets right here. And I can see that any pressure on this at all, left or right or even down, it's probably gonna pop the rivet, crack the plastic. So that's not good. But is probably out of the question. It's also serrated. Some like that, some don't. I don't. Um, but will it cut twine, cordage? Maybe make some holes for a fireboard, things like that. Probably. This was a two pack of lighters. Figure 50 cents a piece. They're not Bix, but they do work. And the flame is adjustable. So two is one, one is none. Now for our cordage. I found jute twine, there were three rolls in here of 100 foot a piece. Now there was also polypro line, there was also plastic clothesline. I chose this because there's several uses for this item. I went ahead and grabbed one of my 100 footers and I took it, found the center point at 50 foot and cut it. And I laid them side by side. Found the halfway point again at 25 foot. Grabbed it, now I have four strands coming off of it and I made four ply reverse wrap cordage. Went ahead and fashioned a ridge line with a bowling at the end. And I'm still left with 200 feet of jute twine. Let's go ahead and kick this off. Go ahead and locate your center point. Now take your index finger and thumb from both your hands. Leave yourself about an inch gap. What I want to do is I want to take my right hand, I want to twist away from me. I'll well, take my left hand and twist it towards me. And that should form a loop. There's my loop right there. Now I take my left hand, index finger and thumb, and I'm gonna pinch that loop. Now, we have two strands now. That's why it's called two ply reverse wrap cordage. Now if we wanted to do a four ply, I would just go ahead and lay my cordage out. Place another one on top of it. Twist it the exact same way. There's my loop. Now I have beefed up cordage. It's four ply because I have four strands here. And it can become six ply or eight ply, and it can go on forever. So let's go back to the two ply. Look at my center point. Twist away while I twist towards. There's my loop. Place into my left hand, index finger and thumb. Now I have one horizontal, one vertical. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my index finger and thumb of my right hand and I'm going to twist it away from me until it's tight. Just like that. Now I'm going to take my middle finger of my right hand. I'm going to grab my vertical and I'm going to pinch it between my index finger. Just like that. Now I'm going to wrap it towards myself. Separate them, do the exact same thing again. Twist away, grab 
grab, wrap. So I'm twisting away from myself, again grabbing it with my middle finger and pressing it against the nail of my index finger, wrapping it towards my body. Away, grab, wrap. Twist away, grab, wrap. And then you just keep repeating this process until you get your quarters completed or carpal tunnel, one or the other. <laughs> Every once in a while you got to separate them out, twist away, grab and wrap. And as you progress, it should resemble cordage you buy at the store. And the true test is, when you let go of it and lay it down, it doesn't unwind itself, so you must be doing it right. Now for our cover element. This is what we're going to use for our shelter. Keep the elements out, keep us dry, keep the heat in, help regulate our body's core temperature. There were a couple options there. There was a painter's drop cloth, which wasn't water resistant or waterproof at all, so I said that's not even an option. There was an actual barbecue cover, it was a tarp, and it measured four by six, but it was so cheap, any pressure on it at all, you could actually see light through there. So that wasn't an option. So I stumbled upon this, shower curtain liner. Measure 70 by 72. We all know 6 times 12 is 72, so we're looking at almost a 6x6 six six area on the back. 100% PVC, so that tells me it's going to be waterproof. Now for our container. The only metal bottle they had there at this dollar store was a spray bottle you see right here. And that sucks. Holds 10 ounces of water, or beverage of your choice. And that's it. Is it multiple use? Yes. I can boil water in this. I can go ahead and make char cloth in this. And I can use it multiple times. However, it's aluminum. It's not the safest thing in the world, but it's better than having nothing. So also what I found, the threads on here match up perfectly to a Diet Coke lid. So now, if I boiled water in this, we'll go ahead and let it cool down and have a watertight lid. Let's go ahead and talk about this bottle a little bit more. 10 ounces, sucks. Hands down, no matter how much you sugarcoat it, sucks. I can do a lot more things with metal versus plastic, but 10 ounces sucks. So what if, because we went to a dollar store, what if there's another option? 50 ounces of water in a container for $1 and sodium hypochlorite 8% for $1. Now I can disinfect water for weeks or even months. Now the CDC recommends between two and four drops of sodium hypochlorite 8% per US quart. This is 50 ounces. So it should be safe to say five drops of sodium hypochlorite at 8% should suffice and do the job of disinfecting this water after 30 minutes. So now you say, well, how do I get five drops of bleach into this container without an eyedropper? I'm gonna show you how to make one. Remove your cap. Be careful not to spill it. Grab a small piece of jute twine. Go ahead and lay it inside or coil it up inside your cap. and just leave a little bit left over, about an inch or so, to dangle off the side, just like this. Now in theory, the jute twine will act as a wick. It will soak up all that bleach, will spill over the edge, and you'll be able to control the drops off the end right here. Let's go ahead and try it. One. Two, three, four, and five. Now the CDC recommends between two and four drops per US quart, and that depends on clarity. If water's clear like this, you can probably get by with two drops per US quart. 
we're dealing with 50 ounces and this is an unknown water source. So I went ahead and maxed it out with five drops. So once you get your five drops or between two and four per US quart, place your lid back on, mix it around a little bit and wait 30 minutes. We got our five items for $5. We went ahead and reviewed and talked about them. And let's go ahead and take that theory and put it into practical application. You got my ridge line right here. I selected these two trees. I'm gonna go ahead and hang my tarp or my shower curtain liner on my ridge line. I'm gonna go ahead and start about waist height on this tree right here. Take my end with my bowline. What I wanna do right here is make a loop. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand underneath. I'm gonna wrap it around like this, and it forms a loop. I'm gonna place that loop on top of my line, reach inside, pull it through. And there's our loop right there. I'm taking my opposite end of my cordage, I'm gonna pass it through that loop. I'm gonna pull it tight towards that tree. Now from here, it's pretty straightforward. I have my line and my loop. All I'm gonna do is pinch them together, drape the excess over just like that, reach inside, pull it through. Now we have a ridge line. This is actually perfect right here. The shower curtain liner actually has one perk. It's got a weight inside of it. You see that right there. There's actually three of them on the back end of this. So what I can do is go ahead and twist it around like this. Tie a jam knot around this, which is a slip knot and a stop knot. And I can go ahead and anchor my other end off to a stake. So we're going to do that right now. So what I want to do, cut a piece of my jute twine, and there's several ways you can do this. All I'm going to do, take my line and go around itself, just like this, then go back up through it. And that's a slip knot right there. Place it over top of it. And cinch it down. Now we have an anchor point. And to secure it, you can go ahead and tie an overhand knot to act as a stopper knot on this end. Just like that. Now for the front of our shelter. We don't have the luxury of using those weights like we did in the back. But one thing we can do is take a pine cone, cut it in half, place it inside here, twist it up the exact same way, tie it off, and anchor it down.
Got three poles and some extra jute twine, so I thought I'd go ahead and make a tripod. So we're going to start off with our clove hitch. There's our basic X pattern right there. Now from our clove hitch, we'll make a timber hitch. Let's wrap around several times. And we'll go ahead and wrap around all three poles about six times. Do one more. Go ahead and dress these up just like that. Now I want to do a frap. I want to go between my poles three times. And there's two. That makes three. I'm gonna pull it tight. I'll go to this side and do the exact same thing. And that pole split. So go ahead and run this up inside here. Still save this. There we go. Wrap this side now. And there's two. There's three. Now what I'll do is I'll finish off on this side with a clove hitch and an overhand knot. And here's our X. Go ahead and trim this off a little bit. And now we'll tie an overhand knot.
Just like that. All right, our cheap camp is almost set up using our five items for $5. So what I want to do right now is find a way to hang my bottle from my tripod. So to do that, I took my jute twine, made a loop. And this loop's probably about two and a half to three feet in length. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a lark's head knot on a stick. I'm gonna place it inside my bottle and hang it off my tripod. So now taking my stick and my loop, all I'm gonna do is place it behind my stick, reach inside, and pull the remainder all the way through. Then cinch it tight. It's called a lark's head knot. Now I'll place this inside my bottle. Now I can hang it from my tripod. Now the last thing I want to show you right here pertains to fire starting. Take your jute twine and cut small pieces off. Let's go ahead and unravel them, pull them apart. And you can already see it resembles hair, kind of like horse hair. You just keep doing that and you get a pile. You can use this as a tinder bundle, as a bird's nest. You can add it to a bird's nest. But what I want you to see is how easy it goes up in flame. Welcome back. This is cheap. We have a base camp set up for $5. Now keep in mind, this is probably the worst gear you're ever going to want to have in the field, other than a 55 gallon drum liner. But if this is all you had, this is all you could afford, you can make it work for a night or two. Thanks for comments, views, support. Thanks for watching. I'm going to catch you next time.